Hi, so in this video I would like to talk about productivity and mental health. We all know that it is connected, but not often we dig into how it is connected and what we can do to make things better, to become uh, healthier in our mindsets and uh, approach productivity in a healthier way. So in this video, I will be talking about performance anxiety. I will be talking about flow states and, and distractions and also the importance of rest. When it comes to performance anxiety, what happens is that we can consider that there are two types of anxiety. There is positive anxiety and negative anxiety. So what happens is that our brains, when they are faced with a new challenge, the brain will scan for all the possible scenarios, how that challenge is going to turn out for us. So what happens is that if we have a positive approach to the challenge and we feel that we are able to accomplish the challenge and we have the we have the skills and we have the methods and uh, the chances, the odds are on our side, that will create a positive anxiety around that happening, around that challenge, because we believe that it is possible, we know that we have to put in the effort, but we believe that it's going to turn out well. On the other hand, what, hop what happens most often is that instead of having a positive approach to uh, the challenge, the brain is looking into all that can go wrong. So what happens in this case, we see the challenge as a real threat. We see as something uh, dreadful, uh, that it's really difficult to overcome. Uh, perhaps we feel that we don't have the skills, we don't have the right methods, uh, and all that makes for this challenge to become this really big thing and um, complicated thing that creates this negative anxiety. So the things that you can do in order to overcome this in the case that you're experiencing the negative anxiety, the things that you can do is to, well, you can have a very good plan around how you're going to overcome this challenge because we know that uncertainty is friends with anxiety and everything that can help you to become clearer about how you're going to overcome the challenge is going to ease your um, anxious feelings as, as well. So to plan really well and to know exactly how you're going to overcome this is, is a good thing. Also to understand, do I actually have uh, the skills and the methods to do this or do I need to gain some skill or perhaps invest in a new method? Because that can be the case. It might be that it's actually not possible to achieve that thing with the with the methods and the tools that you have at the moment. So perhaps you need to investigate also around that. Um, another thing that you can do is to actually become aware of how you are um, approaching the challenge in your mind because it's it's important that you understand what kind of self-talk you're having around this particular thing. So if you're telling yourself, oh, I can't do this, or this is too hard, or I'll never be able to do this. Uh, this is just building up this negative anxiety. While if you say things like, um, I will learn how to do this. I might not be able to do this now, but I will in the future, or um, other people have done it. I can do it too. Or, uh, you know, anything that is a more kind of supportive self-talk will also um, ease on your performance anxiety and also um, you know to understand what kind of mindset you have in general will be very helpful because you might have this uh, mindset that takes failures very harshly so you can look at the failure and say uh, you know you can take it as a personal thing so when you fail you feel that uh, you are a failure or you can have a different kind of mindset and approach to challenges which is I'm failing, I'm learning, and I am progressing as a person, so failing is all right. This is a very important mindset to, to have. Okay, so when it comes to flow states and distractions, here um, the research tells us that when we are doing something that we feel that is just the right amount of challenge, meeting our level of skills, when we are in that optimal zone, so to say, then we can reach a flow state. And in these flow states, uh, we uh, see that it's possible to be much, much more productive. So how do we reach these flow states? Well, first of all, you need to see if 
the level of challenge that you're setting yourself up to is actually adequate because if it is um, too low you will feel bored but it, if, if it is too high you will feel too anxious and frustrated because you're not being able to achieve it or to, to accomplish it uh, and then the other is also that you create the space for this flow state to happen so if you are setting yourself to work but you have this constant dis distractions going on whether by you know maybe now you're working from home and uh, you have family members around you or uh, the bipping on your phone doesn't uh, stop and it can happen anytime um, or you have the notifications also even on your desktop telling you that you have a new email or even maybe yourself you want to check your email uh, quite compulsively uh, some people are uh, guilty of that those are all things that will interrupt that flow state or will just make it impossible for this for the flow state to happen so uh, these distractions these external distractions are very important to to manage so that you create an environment you can set yourself some time to be distraction free the interesting thing is that distractions don't come just from the external world they can also come from within you and that is uh, linked to what we were talking before which is you might be setting yourself to work but then you're distracted by your own thoughts so it's important also to to catch yourself when you're having these thoughts that are influencing the way that you approach work or influencing your yeah influencing your state of mind when you are working so when you are working it's important that you kind of keep your mind clear of any judgments of how the work is going to go so any any kind of thought that comes up and says no but this is worth worthless or um oh, this is too hard or this is uh, so boring you know whatever it is that pops into your mind that is distracting you from the path of the work that you're doing you need to kind of like oh this is a thought that it's actually not being helpful right now uh, let me just focus just plainly or on what I'm doing without any judgments of whether it's good or bad or easy or hard or whatever just 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 do it <laughs> for the the time that you set yourself to to be in that productive state but it's also important uh, that you don't overdo this uh, time or that you don't think that it is possible to be in a float state for uh, too long because it isn't and that takes us to the next uh, point that I want to talk about which is rest rest is highly underestimated these days and I would say that this is partially because uh, we live in a society that we are constantly being bombarded with unrealistic um, images of unrealistic uh, lives which makes us think that um, well first of all that our lives are not enough that we are far from that that which we see on social media etc because we see all these fantastic lives and uh, beautiful pictures of tropical places and all those things uh, and we feel that oh but my life is so far away from this and, and that in itself is it creates this kind of frustration but what what i want to come to is that when we have this kind of like um standard which seems to be a standard which is quite unrealistic and we also have these messages that if you do more you can be better what makes is that we start seeing rest as a form of self-sabotage so if you're not doing something if you're not uh, being productive if you're just resting you're sabotaging your chances of having a great life like the ones that everyone is, is having around you when you look in, into uh, social media. This couldn't be far further from the truth uh, because rest is an absolute essential if you want to um, be productive. So physically, we really need rest, not just the rest when you go to bed, but giving yourself and your brain a rest. So that means that uh, when you are taking that longer uh, bubble bath or when you are going on a walk and instead of listening to a podcast to learn more and, and you know in a, in, in a way feel that you are doing something you know to just go on a walk and listen to music 
without having this mindset that you have to be doing something, that you have to be evolving. Now, one thing I would like to say about rest is that sometimes we rest in a way that uh, might or might not be the most effective, so to say. So let's imagine that you're binge watching um, a, a, a Netflix series that has a lot of violence in it. Uh, your brain is not able to distinguish um, images that it sees with reality. So you're actually making your brain feel that there is a lot of threat around you and there is a lot of uh, violence around you. So perhaps what you're feeding your mind with, what you're feeding your brain with, isn't the most restful thing. So it's also interesting if you start noticing how things affect you in a deeper level. So how do you feel when you go on a walk without any music? Do you feel frustrated? Probably <laughs> because you're being bored and it doesn't, uh, you're not used to being bored anymore. Uh, but how does it feel? For example, how does it feel to commute with very soothing music as opposed to um, listening to the morning news? So basically what you are feeding your mind with is affecting the way you feel. So uh, rest is also in these small things. Maybe there is a moment in your day that you could bring one or two minutes of stillness and that would be a fantastic pause for your brain rather than going outside and scrolling social media on your break which is only giving again this sense of I am not there and this is not the life that I would like to have and I would like to be living this life instead. Okay, so that is it. We talked about how there is positive and negative anxiety slash stress, how it is important to create spaces for the flow states to happen, and also how it is super important to give yourself a rest to understand what kind of rest is more uh, beneficial for you. So what would you say is the thing that kind of clicked the most with you in this in this video? Is there anything you can do about it or undo? Maybe do is taking a nap. I love, I love, love, love a good nap. So next week I will be talking about neuroplasticity and anxiety. So if you'd like to know more about that, you can join me next week. See you then.